Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not doing evolution stuff today. Instead, we are doing election stuff because it is October of 2024 and there is a presidential election right around the corner. So today I am going to show you how Trump has lost a step or two steps or a lot of steps since 2016 and is now in 2024 obviously physically and mentally not up for the job of being president. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of clips here starting with comparisons of his first debate against Hillary Clinton way back in 2016 and his more recent debate with Kamala Harris in September of 2024. Now what Trump is saying is not the point here. We all know about Trump's policies, okay? Banning not just abortion, but also fertility care, IVF, contraception, using the military to put down political opposition, all the stuff in Project 2025 from ending overtime pay and gutting unions to forcing evangelical Christianity into schools, politicizing all levels of the federal government, and even banning pornography, just like crazy culture war stuff. In 2016, he was the same dishonest BS artist that he is today. But pay attention to how he says it. Pay attention to the performance. As you'll see, Trump in 2024 is diminished physically and mentally. He's clearly unfit to be president. This first part is a quick side-by-side -side from those two debates. Watch these short clips and you'll see what I mean. We don't know what we're doing when it comes to devaluations and all of these countries all over the world, especially China. They're the, the best, the best ever at it. First of all, I have no sales tax. That's an incorrect statement. She knows that. Uh, we're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years, pay us back for all that we've done for the world. What they're doing to us is a very, very sad thing. So we have to do that. We have to renegotiate our trade deals. And Lester, they're taking our jobs, they're giving incentives, they're doing things that, frankly, we don't do. Uh, let me give you the example of Mexico. They have a VAT tax. We're in a different system. When we sell into Mexico, there's a tax. When they sell in automatic, 16 percent approximately, when they sell into us, there's no tax. And the tariff will be substantial in some cases. I took in billions and billions of dollars, as you know, from China. In fact, they never took the tariff off because it was so much money they can't. It's a defective agreement. It's been defective for a long time, many years, but the politicians haven't done anything about it. It would totally destroy everything that they've set out to do. They're taking in billions of dollars from China and other places. They've left the tariffs on. Everybody see what I mean? In this next comparison, I'm going to show you a longer clip from each debate. Pay attention to how 2016 Trump can recall specific numbers, clearly pronounce big words, and comparatively stay on topic. Compare that to his meandering, slurred monologue in 2024 in which he can do none of those things. By the way, the 2024 clip here is two minutes long, and I'm showing the whole thing because you have to see the complete ramble to appreciate the level of decline compared to the relative coherence and focus in 2016. So check it out. As far as my tax returns, you don't learn that much from tax returns, that I can tell you. You learn a lot from financial disclosure, and you should go down and take a look at that. The other thing, I'm extremely underleveraged. Uh, the report that said 650, which, by the way, a lot of friends of mine that know my business said, boy, that's really not a lot of money. It's not a lot of money relative to what I had. The buildings that were in question, they said in the same report, which was actually wasn't even a bad story, to be honest with you, but the buildings are worth $3.9 billion. And the 650 isn't even on that, but it's not 650. It's much less than that. But I could give you a list of banks. I would, if that would help you, I would give you a list of banks. These are very fine institutions, very fine banks. I could do that very quickly. I am very under leveraged. I have a great company. I have a tremendous income. And the reason I say that is not in a braggadocious way. It's because it's about time that this country had somebody running it that has an idea about money. President Trump, on that point, I want to get your response. Well, I would like to respond. Let me just ask, though, why did you try to kill that bill, and successfully so? That would have put thousands of additional agents and officers on the border. First, let me respond as to the Please. rallies. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. 
And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there, and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase, make America great again. She's destroying this country, and if she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. Not only success, we'll end up being Venezuela on steroids. I just want to clarify here, you bring up Springfield, uh, Ohio, and, and ABC News did reach out to the city manager there. Uh, he told us there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. Well, All I've this, seen people on television. Let me just say here, this is the... the people on television say my dog was taken and used for food. So maybe he said that, and maybe that's a good yeah. thing to say for a city manager. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people on I'm television say the their dog was eaten by the people that went there. Now I'm going to show you two segments where Trump is talking about the same topic. So we have an apples to apples comparison eight years apart. In the first clip I'm gonna show you here, he names a number of countries from memory, stays on topic, and makes a relatively cogent argument. Compare that to the 2024 clip we're about to watch, where he's noticeably kind of talking like a child. You'll see, watch. So I just wanna give a lot of things and just to respond. I agree with her on one thing. The single greatest problem the world has is nuclear armament, nuclear weapons. Not global warming like you think and your, your president thinks. Uh, nuclear is the single greatest threat. Uh, just to go down the list, uh, we defend Japan, we defend Germany, we defend South Korea, we defend Saudi Arabia, we defend countries. They do not pay us what they should be paying us because we are providing tremendous service, and we're losing a fortune. That's why we're losing, we're losing, we lose on everything. I say, who makes these? We lose on everything. Well, I said that it's very possible that if they don't pay a fair share, because this isn't 40 years ago where we could do what we're doing. We can't defend Japan, a, a behemoth selling us cars by the million. We need to move on. Well, wait, but it's very important. All I said was they may have to defend themselves or they have to help us out. We're a country that owes $20 trillion. They have to help us out. Our, our as last... far as the nuclear is concerned, I agree. It is the single greatest threat that this country has. Putin would be sitting in Moscow, and he wouldn't have lost 300,000 men and women, but he would have been sitting in Moscow. Quiet, please. He would have been sitting in Moscow much happier than he is right now. But eventually, you know, he's got a thing that other people don't have. He's got nuclear weapons. They don't ever talk about that. He's got nuclear weapons. Nobody ever thinks about that. And eventually, uh, maybe he'll use them, and maybe he hasn't been that threatening. But he does have that, something we don't even like to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about it. See what I mean? He's clearly, like, lost something in the eight years between those two clips. Now I'm going to show you a few more short clips from the 2024 debate so you can see just how weak and incoherent he's become even compared to 2016, when it's not like he was like making a whole lot of sense even then. But just take a look at these short clips. It's complete nonsense. And what we will do is we're looking at different plans. If we can come up with a plan that's going to cost our people, our population, less money and be better health care than Obamacare, then I would absolutely do it. But until then, I'd run it as good as it can be run. So just a yes or no, you still do not have a plan? I have concepts of a plan. Well, the reason I'm doing that vote is because the plan is, as you know, the vote is, 
they have abortion in the ninth month. I are said you, that. Are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you said did that say sarcastically. That. You but know was, that. It was said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. Look, there's so much proof. All you have to do is look at it. And they should have sent it back to the legislatures for approval. I got almost 75 million votes, the most votes any sitting president has ever gotten. I was told if I got 63, which was what I got in 2016, you can't be beaten. Uh, the election, people should never be thinking about it. An election is fraudulent. We need two things. We need walls. We need, and we have to have it. We have to have borders, and we have to have good elections. Our elections are bad. And a lot of these illegal immigrants coming in, they're trying to get them to vote. They can't even speak English. They don't even know what country they're in, practically. And these people are trying to get them to vote. And that's why they're allowing them to come into our country. I did watch. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know, and as she knows better than anyone, I have nothing to do with Project 2025. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad, but it makes no difference. I have nothing to do. They know that, and everybody else knows it. I have been a leader on fertilization, IVF. And the other thing, they, you should ask, Will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? But if I could just get a yes or no, because your running mate, Jen J.D. Vance, has said that you would veto if it did come to your desk. Well, I didn't discuss it with uh, J.D., in all fairness. Uh, J.D., uh, and I, I don't mind if he has a certain view, but I think he was speaking for me, but I really didn't. Look. I mean, like, what can I say about this? Concepts of a plan. I have been a leader on fertilization. It speaks for itself. The last bit of these debates I want to show you are just back-to-back -back comparisons from Trump's closing arguments in each. I don't have anything to add to this comparison. I don't have any additional commentary. Just watch the next couple of minutes and you'll see exactly what I mean. I want to make America great again. We are a nation that is seriously troubled. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. We're losing our jobs. People are pouring in to our country. The other day, we were deporting 800 people. And within one year, they were back to building normal energy plants. We're not ready for it. We can't sacrifice our country for the sake of bad vision. That's it for the comparisons from the debates. But I'm going to show you one last thing. Several clips from a rally Trump held on October 14th, 2024. I'm going to show you some longer segments here because you have to hear him and you have to see him. And it's frankly, like, uncomfortable. As you watch, I want you to experience that. I want you to experience the discomfort of watching, like, several minutes of Trump as he is in 2024. Because this man is running for president, and he is clearly, clearly not up for the job. What happened at this rally was, after some amount of time of, of doing kind of back and forth, taking questions from the audience, he stopped, and he said no more questions, and he called for music, uh, and then he just kind of like stood there bobbing and dancing for over half an hour. And it's weird and uncomfortable. So I want to show you some of that because you have to see it to believe it. Let's not do any more questions. Let's just listen to music. Let's make it into a music. <laughs> Who the hell wants to hear questions, right? Uh, that's, isn't that beautiful, though? It's, it's so beautiful. And we played that in Butler, Pennsylvania. We had a moment of silence, and then we had the bells of Notre Dame go off, and then we had a great opera singer, Christopher, who was so incredible. And, yeah. A great, great opera singer. Uh, that's Pavarotti. Pavarotti, I guess, is... Uh, I actually asked Christopher, I said, uh, your voice is incredible. How does it compare to Pavarotti? No, 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 sir. He was the maestro. He was the greatest of them all. And this man's voice, you all probably heard it. He was phenomenal. But he said, no, 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 Pavarotti was the greatest. Maybe uh, we'll play Time to Say Goodbye when we end. Yes, okay? that sounds fantastic. All right, do we want to do that? Absolutely. We'll have a little... Instead of your normal, like, rock out of the place. Yes. We are in clover, and then we're going to fix our country, and we're going to fix it fast. We're going to fix it fast. So get that song done. Okay. Get that song ready, and when we leave, we're going to have a beautiful... You could just sit. By the way, when we leave, you don't have to 
go so fast. You could sit and listen. We'll play a couple of songs. Some of you will be a little warm, but that's okay. It's not a bad thing. And if you want, we're going to do that, but I think it would be beautiful. Don't you think? A little different. I think nice. it'd be amazing, sir. Nice to have imagination. Isn't it a nice thing to have imagination? Yes. It's like when Kamala's teleprompter went out the other day. Mm -hmm. She was at 32 days. Did you see that? I did. She loses teleprompters, and you wouldn't know that she lost it. Me, me, I always lose. You know, if you're a politician, you can count on 5% of the time you lose a teleprompter, sometimes really badly, like in the middle of a sentence, and you say, ooh, that's a good, you got to have a good memory. If you don't have a good memory, you can't be much of a politician. That, But it, they go out. Sometimes, if you're outside, the wind blows them down. I had one in Ohio. We had 45-mile-an-hour winds, and I said, I'm going to lose these suckers. And within about the first two sentences, they were gone. They I remember blew that. Off the I was at that rally. So. But Bernie Marino, who's now doing very well, I understand, mm -hmm, the is. senator. So I think he's doing very well. But we'll listen to a couple of songs if you want, and that's okay with me. I like it. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do those songs that we had mentioned, Justin. And if Justin doesn't get it right, he gets fired. <laughs> Those doors are open. That feels good. It does. I feel it right now. I don't know who's out there trying to get in, but there. But you know what I feel? Doesn't that feel nice? Yes. And you don't even have, there's nothing like outdoors. You don't even have the cost of an air conditioner if they have them in this beautiful factory. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, please. Yep. Well, sir, do you want to play your song and then greet a few people, or do you want to? Well, you had said you wanted to close with a specific song. Okay, or we let's do a couple of more fast questions. So, Justin, how about a couple of really beauties, and we'll sit down, relax. Let me just give you the bottom line, though. Go and vote. Yes. Let me hear that music, please. Everyone, Let let's thank music. President loud. Trump. Nice and loud. God bless you. Let's send President Trump back to the White House. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Having just watched that, try to convince yourself that Trump can do the job of president. Try. You know it isn't true. He just isn't up for it anymore. All you have to do to realize that's the case is watch him and listen to him. He clearly doesn't have it in him. That means we're going to have someone who is dangerously unequipped to do this job in the White House. He completely failed on the only major crisis he faced during his presidency, the COVID pandemic. He completely failed, and hundreds of thousands of people died needlessly due to his incompetence. He is worse now than he was then. Do we want him to face the next crisis in his current state? What about three years, four years from now? Do we want that 82-year-old Trump to face that crisis? This also means that the zealots around him will be the ones actually in charge, and they'll institute the authoritarian playbook in Project 2025 while Trump is off in la-la land doing whatever he's doing. I can't impress upon you how important this is. Make sure you vote for Kamala Harris for president this year and keep this dangerously unfit man out of office. Thank you for watching. Please remember to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment. Please, please share this video around before the election. And as always, the context is different, but the reminder is the same. Don't get fooled.